Hi everyone, and welcome to Anna Dialogue, the dialogue on analog music reproduction. Today, we're gonna do a video finally on music, the subject of this channel, the true subject of this channel. Usually, as you know, I always try to um, analyze the components, the gear, everything that can help and en enhance the fidelity of our music reproduction. But um, I think it's important to talk about music. I always postpone this kind of video. I only uh, posted one video on this, um, on the uh, 70s soundtracks. Here's a link to it. Um, and I want, I want to start and do more videos about this, uh, this type. So today we're going to talk about one of my greatest passions um, in terms of music tastes. What am I talking about? Jazz. Between bebop, hard bop, a little pinch of cool, Let's take a look. Go! Okay, so we're gonna take a look at 10 main albums, in my opinion, I obviously in my most humble opinion, that I think are fantastic. Um, I tried not to pick the most famous and obvious ones, but um, at the same time, I did want it to go and pick these 10 albums from the golden age of jazz. What's the golden age of jazz? Well, mainly the 50s and the first years of the 60s. That's the top of the tops. So um, I just want to say one more thing. Uh, a lot of my jazz albums, uh, I bought these during the 90s. And... Um, in that period, as you can imagine, LPs weren't that strong. I mean, it was it was very rare. The original the originals are insanely priced. Also today, the same. So you, it's impossible to get um, a good uh, original jazz recordings. I mean, they they really cost hundreds and hundreds of dollars. So you have to hunt for good reissues. But in the 90s, I was a student, and plus there weren't weren't that many LPs. So I mainly focused on CDs. Actually, these are the first reissues on CDs that I bought during the, the, during the 90s. So this video, you're gonna see a lot of CDs, unfortunately. I know this is an analog channel, but as I said, uh, digital is, is also rewarding, no problem with that. And obviously, though, if you have the chance, get all these albums I'm going to suggest in analog, LP, tape, whatever. I have on, on CD, unfortunately. But slowly, I'm trying to to buy a few good reissues, but it, it takes time and a lot of money. But let's start, let's jump in. Okay, our first album, the Oscar Peterson Trio, Night Train. This is one of the first jazz albums, probably the second or third that I've bought in my entire life. Um, I love the concept of night, everything that regards night, and I love trains when you when you focus on your music, especially when you take a night train. So I thought this title was actually perfect associated to jazz. So um, as I was saying, this is one of the top, if not my favorite albums of Oscar Peterson. This came out in 1963. I do have a list here with dates just to, as a reminder. I'm not going to... Um, uh, lie on that and we're going to try to hear a few seconds of of the key tracks because i love these albums and i'm going to have to cut a little bit obviously for copyright issues um let's see if we can As you know, Oscar Peterson is one of the best jazz musicians on piano. Together with him, uh, Ray Brown on bass and Ed Thigpen on drums. Just a normal trio. And as you can see, that syncopath rhythm, like a train, exactly. And I think this is a fantastic album. This is a huge reissue. Unfortunately, I hate that, um, that uh, philosophy of re-editing, reissuing uh, albums adding all the, the possible extra uh, tracks and alternative takes. Unfortunately, all these re remasters, reissues of the 90s are full with that. Now I think they're starting to go back to uh, re -ed republish these in a much more sober way. So definitely check out this album, and if you have the possibility, go for the originals. Okay, 
So, let's proceed. Second album, Jerry Mulligan, Night Lights. Now, this is among my top five albums of jazz of all time. I've played this hundreds of times. This is a very, very um, soft kind of jazz. It's, it's a good example of cool jazz, actually. And the, the, the baritone saxophone of Jerry Mulligan is something truly magical. Um, he uh, picks a few, a few tracks here, also based on Chopin or on the famous um, uh, Black Orpheus movie. And I don't know, I, there, there's something magical here. Let's see the personnel. This came out in 1963. As I said, Jerry Mulligan and baritone saxophone. Art Farmer on trumpet at Flugenhorn. Bob Brookmeyer, trombone. Jim Hall, guitar. Ooh, Jim Hall. He's one of the greatest jazz guitars. Bill Crow, bass. And Dave Bailey, drums. Fantastic. Just rapidly one little track. There's a little pinch of uh, Latin, we could say, Latin jazz here. In, in other tracks, not this one. Very soft, very nice. So, again, one of my top five albums when you really want to create a soft and nice atmosphere for, uh, obviously for listening, remember, remember that video on the philosophy on how you should listen to music, here's the link. But obviously as, no, no problem with that, as a nice background for a, a romantic dinner, uh, just a relaxed evening, absolutely, night lights. Okay, let's now go something with a little more energy. The master, one of the greatest um, jazz uh, artists in, in, in history, also because he was there in the beginning of bebop, Mr. Dizzy Gillespie. Um, this is one of his various albums. He did so many. And I think this has a really interesting uh, Arabic, uh, Middle Eastern touch, especially in the, in, the, in, the, um, in the tracks of Kush or A Night in Tunisia. These are, it's fantastic. This is a great album. This is a live recording uh, from a, a concert they did in 1961. Um, an electrifying evening with the Dizzy Gillespie Quintet. So just to give you a little hint, I hope YouTube is not a cut off all of this. Let's try. <laughs> There's a lot of uh, famous uh, pieces of, of Dizzy. For example, we have Salt Peanuts. That's probably one of his most famous tracks. Um, you can find that in different albums. And um, here we have a, 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 a fantastic quintet, actually. We have Leo Wright on the alto saxophone and flute. Lalo Skifrin, which will, became, which will be, become very famous in movie soundtracks. Bob Cunningham on bass and Chuck Lumpkins on drum. Um, as you know, Dizzy had a special kind of trumpet. He modified his trumpet after one, somebody stepped over it and bent the, the main horn at a, at a 45 degree. He started to use his horn that way, made on purpose for him. Here's an image. Fantastic, amazing, incredible artist. Okay, let's proceed. Um, okay, our next album, actually I have it on LP. This is um, a fabulous, album of Dave, the, of Dave Brubeck Quartet, Jazz Impres Impressions of Japan. This came out in 1964. Um, and this is an original pressing in mono. Uh, U.S. pressing in mono. This isn't that famous, I must say. Uh, we all know Take, um, take Out of Dave, of Dave Brubeck Quartet which is uh, one of the most famous jazz albums of history. Here's an image. But Dave Brubeck did 
many, several fabulous albums. Absolutely. I don't know why a lot of them are not even discussed that much in forums and republished. For example, this, you cannot find it on CD now. I don't I have no idea why, and it's fantastic. The sad part is that this is an original mono reissue, a mono pressing, which is, I must say, much worse than this. I had the, uh, I was pretty lucky on eBay to find um, the, uh, the 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 tape copy, the four track version, seven point five uh, inch per second version which sounds amazing, it's incredible. I love this album, especially because I heard it the first time on this. Then I decided to buy the LP. But I don't know why, this is 10 times better. If you listen to this, it's very normal. I don't know why. And that is why I, I've tried to convince people, try to uh, let them understand my thought on how analog is much more engaging. Maybe it's not objectively perfect, but it's much more engaging. And this, I mean, this is kind of a proof of that. And I'm sure if we got, if we buy the CD, it's gonna be even worse. So, great album of Brit De Brubeck. Let's proceed. Um, now this is a huge classic. I must admit, this is a huge classic. Waltz for Debbie, Bill Evans Trio. Um, yeah, I wanted to put this because this is another, Fantastic example of very soft, cool jazz. Bill Evans trio at his best. I love this XRCD version of JVC. I don't know if you're familiar with these, but these reissues on this, um, let's say, series, fantastic series of JVC, uh, uh, per fantastic remastering, high quality, uh, very simple linear passages, the AD conversions, etc. are at the, at the best. I mean, if you want to buy a digital version and it's not an SACD or something something like that, this is the way to go. Absolutely. Very, very analog, we could say. And this, this was published in 1961 and we have the typical Bill Evans trio. Bill Evans is one of the most famous pianists that we have in jazz, the jazz universe. Scott LaFaro on bass and Paul Motion on drums. Very nice. Live recording. Um, recently, and a few years uh, ago, the whole Riverside um, LPs of uh, Bill Evans have been published. The first time in 33 RPM, now in 45 RPM by Analog Productions, and they are amazing. I mean, if you really like Bill Evans, you should look for those before they're uh, uh, not available anymore. Okay, another great artist, Red Garland. Uh, this is a, he's a, another uh, piano jazz pianist, another jazz pianist. One of the, I think, one of the best, actually. And I would say it's, it's somehow similar to Oscar Peterson. And it, and Red Garland was among various quartets, trio, quintets. The most famous quintet. We'll see afterwards what I'm talking about. And this, for example, is a perfect, sorry about this kind of dull term, but a perfect Sunday morning record. And that's how I use this many times. Fabulous. This is actually a 1957 recording with Greg Garland piano, Paul Chambers bass, and Arthur Taylor on drums. As you can hear, very soft, very nice, full, nice volume, nice sound, rich. I must say that I am pretty um, shocked by these uh, reissues because they are very, very good. Actually, they are, they are excellent. These are by Prestige or also the Atlantic recordings. Okay, so let's proceed. After this, I had to put at least one album of one of the greatest artists of all time that we all know about, Miles Davis, Round About Midnight. This is a 1957 recording, and this has one of the most famous, actually, 
personnel, the quintet. Um, I'll read it just because I'm not sure of all the artists, but um, it's one of the most famous quintets of all time. Miles Davis on trumpet. Uh, he, he has this typical, um, uh, the mute trump trumpet on all these, these recordings. Very nice, very soft, very cool jazz. Uh, as I said, this this term of midnight of night that comes in all these albums is is highly um, uh, connected to the, the the image the the environment that they're able to recreate, and it's fantastic. I mean, when you put your lights low and you put something like this, I mean, you're 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 set. So as I was saying, Miles Davis on trumpet, John Coltrane on tenor sax, uh, Red Garland on piano, told you, Paul Chambers on bass, and Philly Joe Jones on drums. The best of the best. There are a lot of albums by them, um, and this is actually one of the best. This is on Columbia, but a mono recording actually, and uh, not a fantastic CD actually, I must say, but um, a decent, a decent version. This should be on on vinyl. I think it deserves a little more vinyl. <laughs> As you can hear, Miles Davis very present here. Okay, let's proceed. Um, the next album is one of the most important albums of Art Blackie. Art Blackie, I considered, together with Max Roach, probably the best drummer of this golden age of jazz. Uh, he did a lot of uh, uh, albums, uh, also a lot of albums where he was part of the personnel. But this is probably one of the most famous, along with, with other ones, Keystone 3, or um, a, a lot of The Night of Birdland. I mean, there are a lot of also live recordings, which I must say are fantastic. Maybe not fantastic, the recording itself, but the music is very, very good. This instead of Riverside, on Riverside is one of, uh, it's an excellent recording. And I think it's one of the, his most famous, actually. Here we have Art Black in drums, Curtis Fuller on trombone, excellent, Freddie Hubert on trumpet, wow, Wayne Shorter on tenor sax, fantastic, Cedar Walton on piano, and Reggie Workman on bass, fantastic, Ipsec exceptional person. <laughs> Okay, sorry, but you're going to have to buy these if you want to listen to them. Unfortunately, there's this tyranny of YouTube and all this BS on copyright, even if you want, just want to present some few albums. Okay, so let's turn back to cool jazz. And this is a fabulous album of uh, the 50s, 1954, of Lester Young and the... Uh, Oscar Peterson Trio, even though this was a quintet actually in this album. Um, Lester Young is a, one of the best te uh, tenor sax. Um, I think this this album has something special. Again, this is one of my, the, the, the first jazz albums I ever bought. And there's something that you understand as soon as you put on the CD, the LP, whatever it is, that there's that the, 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 the artist that is playing as is at a higher level. There's something else that nobody else can replicate, I think, today. Let's see if you can understand what I'm talking about. <laughs> Excellent transposition. Unfortunately, he died too young, and he was an incredible, incredible artist. 
Okay, time for our last album now. Um, again, this is probably among my top three jazz albums. Ooh la la. And it's a special album for me, actually, because um, the music in this album really moves me. I don't know why. It's, it's, it, it's not something connected to my life or anything, but it's just pure fantastic genius. Roots and Blues by Charles Mingus. This is a 1960 recording, and I think it's the best um, album of... Charles Mingus, Charles Mingus on contrabass, the best, also the most famous contrabass in, in jazz, I would say. And let's, I hope I can put the whole track. There are at least two I wanna, I wanna let you hear. Ooh, genius. these CDs I bought in the 90s are, I'm sure for this is the first reissue on, on Rhino of this Atlantic recording. Before this, you have the LP. I mean, and I think they're, they're pretty good for what they are. Okay, guys, this is the end. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed the albums I picked for you. Please leave your comments here below and please give, give us your suggestions on um, important jazz albums of this golden era. Thank you for watching and see you soon. Bye, guys. Ciao, ciao.